all know that the Bible says in Proverbs that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of knowledge, is the beginning of wisdom. And so when we talk about the fear of the Lord, we're talking about the reverence of God, the honoring of God. And so do you really live to honor God in your life? Now, this is a very key question, saints of God, because it may have everything to do with how quickly you progress in the favor of God or continue to regress because your priorities are not God-centered. Are you and I interested in our lives being honorable to our Lord since we say he's our savior and that he is our master? So if he is our master and he is our Lord, then he should be the object of who we want to please. Not ourselves. And so that's one of the way I got past that the roof wasn't done. That was what I wanted to do, Lord. <laughs> but maybe that's in the scheme of things. There's something else you're working that will please you. And maybe it takes time to put it all together. I don't know. Maybe it's a greater discount, some kind of way we're going to get as a church. I don't know. I don't know. But since I'm not omniscient, and he is, and because he knows the end from the beginning, and he's got my plan and my future plan in mind, he's already got it mapped out, and so I'm just going to trust you. And I'm not going to get all discombobulated. I'm not going to get unhappy. I was for a minute. Y'all know what I mean. When you, you don't get what you want, you're wondering, Lord, what's up? But it takes me a little while, and then finally I get myself together and say, wait a minute. Praise the Lord. And so by keeping his word, I want to go back to this 15th and 16th verse in the 14th chapter just for a moment because in verse 15 I asked you to examine what does that really mean? If you love me, you keep my commandments. And if you look at your slide number six, I want to give you a, a thought here as you examine and meditate on this scripture. There are two forces that strengthen us to really obey our God. One is our love for God, and the second one is our fear of the Lord. Our love for God and our fear of the Lord. And when we talk about the fear of the Lord, we're going to be talking about two different aspects. One is reverence, that's where I want to start off, and that other one is the one that uh, sometimes you need a dose of every now and then. And let me, what do I mean by that? Have you ever uh, sometimes um, uh, been in a storm and the thunder is so close that it frightens you? Has that ever happened to anybody? Let me see your hands. Where it's just a crack. Oh, good. Everybody in here raising your hand. It, it, it causes you to have a little reverential fear of God, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm talking about that kind when, when Moses went up to the mountain. And when he came back down and God told those people not to come near the mountain and they touch it, they'll die. And they basically said... You talk to God. <laughs> we don't want nothing to do with this God because he is too awesome. We need a mouthpiece. We need a, a conduit because this God is just too awesome. We're going to get to that scripture in a moment. But I'm saying there's twofold ways that we uh, help uh, strengthen our obedience with God. We have to love him, but we've got to respect him. See, that's what we're losing in the society that we are in right now. People don't respect God anymore. Say Amen. And when it was 9-11, everybody was in church. Oh, it's the end time. Oh, Lord, what is going on? Flood the churches. But a couple days go by, Jesus ain't cracked the sky yet. So let's go back and do what we were doing. That is the time when you get that kind of fear that the other piece that I'm going to be talking about that speaks to the fact that our God is a consuming fire. Both of them are very healthy for the child of God. So back to your slide five. The point is, by keeping his word, we prove we love him. And how do we prove we love him? By, by us living right. 
but not just the living right, but believing right, speaking right. The woman of God taught in our Tuesday class and has been continually teaching about not allowing corrupt communication to flow from your lips. Now, I'm talking about speaking what the word of God has to say and not how you feel. That's all part of the whole point of proving that we love him. We ought to believe his word enough to act upon it. And that may not have anything to do with how you feel. It has to do with the word of God says, somebody say amen. And so, do you believe what Jesus is saying? And I believe this 15th verse is saying, if you fall in love with me, you will keep my words, you'll keep my commandments, because when you fall in love with me, you want to do it. It speaks to the relationship that you have with, with me. Whereas if you reverse it and you put this thought of you keep my words or my commandments, then you will love me, it becomes more of a law. It more, becomes more of an obligation. What God is saying, it's not an obligatory thing when you love me. 